me to Joshua 1, verse 1 to 3. And while you do that, say something nice to God. You know, when you flip the page and say, hallelujah, God, I love you, Jesus, you're good. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Joshua 1, he said, after the death of Moses, the servant of God, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I will give you, as I said to Moses. Will you do me a favor one more time? Stand to your feet. And before we go into preaching the word, just open your mouth and say something good to God. Come on, let me hear you. Let God hear you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. God, you are awesome. God, you are wonderful. We give you all the glory today. All the glory to you. We worship you. We adore you. We thank you for all the things you do for us. The small things, the great things, everything you do for us. The many times we have been saved from, from danger because of your angels are encamping around us. We give you all the glory and we thank you today. Lord, as we are ready to speak about crossing and conquering the land that you gave to us. Today, Father, empower us, Father, to do that very thing. And as I get ready to preach your word, may I not speak my words, but your words, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give a big hand to the Lord before you see it. <laughs> conquering my promised land. I believe this is a crucial time for, for the lives of many. Certainly for the life of this nation. For the life of the believer. Because there is a promised land that belongs to us. And when God promises something to you. If it hasn't happened. Let me spell it out for you. It's not God's fault. Whatever God promises, he makes it happen. But there are certain conditions. Today we're going to look at that. Amen? But let's, let's just speak a little bit of, about the promised land. What is the promised land? What is your promised land? Well, the promised land is the place where God is taking you. That's for sure. It's a good place. The promised land is a place to which you have not arrived. I'm going to go a step further. It's a place you have not conquered yet. Because if you have conquered the land... That God took you before. There is another promised land waiting for you. If you're done with that one. Don't dwell on that one. God has something even better for you. Tell your neighbor God has something better for you. Yeah because sometimes we spend a lot of time contemplating. What I already have. Oh I have a great church. I have a great ministry. I have a great marriage. I have a great whatever. But God says, what about this other thing that I have for you? When are you going to, when are you going to cross into this side? When are you going to conquer this other thing that I have for you? If you, th if you thought for a minute that what I gave you is good. Oh, wait until you see what I have for you in the future. Just wait until you see what I have for you in the future. So first of all, we need to understand what is our promised land. Some of you are, are, have a new ministry. God wants to take you there. I mean, I say in that, if it's a ministry, God has a very special interest on that. <laughs> I mean, God is going to make everything possible, everything even impossible for man to take you there. But there are some things, there are some things that we need to take into consideration. The numbers, the second thing that we need to understand before we talk about this is that Moses was 
totally healthy. Yet, God took him out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Camera people, am I moving too fast? Am I doing good? Okay. He said, Deuteronomy 34, 7 says, Moses was 120 years old when he died. When he died. <laughs> my, my God. His eyes were not dim, nor his natural vigor diminished. My goodness, I'm 70 years old. Sometimes I feel like, oh God. I woke up in the morning and my wife said, aches here. And I said, what about me? What about? We compare notes. Uh, don't laugh at me, you young people, because you're going to get there. Trust me. <laughs> so Moses, he says, it was 120 years old. He didn't need glasses. These glasses cost me like $500. And now they're, when I went to Haiti, I scratched them. When we went to the beach, I scratched my glasses. So now I got to get another for hundred dollars to get another pair of glasses. Moses didn't need glasses. Yet God took him out. So understand that those, these are spiritual principles. Okay. God told Joshua. My servant Moses is dead. Oh, we need to realize that sometimes. It doesn't matter how good it was or how bad it was. Sometimes when God is going to take you to the next level, you must realize that this season is over. And some of us are so, have it so good in this side of the river Jordan that we don't want to cross to the other side. That's a reality. Sometimes we are so good here. And God is there saying, cross, cross over, cross to my side. But we say, no, no, it's just, it feels so good here. Moses was so good. See, understand this. We must be willing to, uh, to leave behind Egypt. And all of us, I want to think we did. But we must be willing to leave behind the wilderness. wilderness. Egypt is a type of the world. But the wilderness is a type of disobedience. Pastor was talking about that this morning. He said, we're going to slay giants. Let's go and pray for this and for that. And Pastor said pretty much, don't go with me if you're, if you're living in the wilderness. You are not ready to conquer, to slay giants and to kill giants if you are still living in the wilderness. In disobedience with God. We must be willing to walk into the unknown. And knowing that the unknown, if it's coming from God, is good. It doesn't matter how unknown it is to me, it's known to God. God knows. And because knows, God knows it's a good thing. It's good what is going to happen to me. So get ready for the unknown. Tell the neighbor, get ready for the unknown. Moses in this case, represents our comfort zone. Moses represents the good old times. Moses represents also the bad old times. Do you know people like this? People that somebody did something to them, something bad, 20 years ago. And anytime you talk to them, they talk about the same thing. Oh, you remember 20 years ago? 20 years ago? This guy, this girl, whatever, did this to me, but that guy doesn't even remember. Let it go. And we hold grudges. And we are dwelling in that, that, that thing that we lost. For too long. And that is an impediment for us to cross into the other side. God is saying. 
get rid of that. Come over. What if you failed before? What if you failed before? Who cares? I make you win this time. I made you more than conquer this time. Just cross over. Saul, before he was made king. Some of you have heard me say this before, but this is for the ones that never, never heard this one. Uh, he lost some donkeys. Say with me, donkey. Don't call me donkey. They belong to his father, so he was looking for, he was going crazy because he couldn't find the donkeys. So he goes to see Samuel, the prophet. And in 1 Samuel 9 20, after he told him, Listen, uh, tell me where the donkeys are. I want to find the donkeys. I can't find the donkeys. Uh, the donkeys are very valuable to my father. My father's going to yell and scream to me. All of that. This is what Samuel said to him Don't worry about the donkeys. Don't worry about the donkeys you lost. Three days ago. He even knew how many days he lost the donkeys. Because you, they have been found. Soon all the wealth of Israel will belong to you and your family. So Samuel was worrying about the donkeys. He was saying, what am I going to do? And, and God has something much better for him. God doesn't have donkeys for you. God has something very good for you. God has some tremendous blessing for you. So tell your neighbor, please forget about the donkeys. Some of us dwell in the losses too long. And God has something better for us. Forget the donkeys. Move on. But you say, Lord, I don't deserve it. That's right, you don't. God, I'm not worthy. Hey, you're not worthy. But God is worthy. My Jesus made me worthy. So I take everything that comes from God. Every blessing that comes from God. Because it's going to be good. So second, Moses was healthy. Yet he, God took him out. Third, the emotion mindset of Joshua. Think of this for a minute. Before he crossed over. He, this guy has been depending on Moses for I don't know how long. 40 years or more. Moses this. Moses what do I do? Moses what do I do with that? How, how do I handle this situation? I mean some of us that are, have been in executive positions. Uh, the pastor that we supervise. The people that we supervise come to us. What do I do in this situation? So, but Joshua was one of those. He knew all the theory. Some of you know all the theory. Some of you know how to quote all the verses of the Bible. Some of you know how to declare, decree, establish, ordain, all of that. Then what happened that you don't cross over? You know that you know the the theory. But God wants you to cross for real to the other side. Fourth, because George has served under Moses for 40 years. Listen to this. He probably knew the job better than Moses. But he stayed put. He waited for his moment. Some people. Nowadays don't do that. Oh I feel like the Lord is calling me to replace. My boss. God is not calling you to do that. Stay still and know that he is God. He's going to come through. He's going to give you the promotion. It's going to come the time of your promotion. He waited for God's time. Until God says, Joshua, arise. 
Moshe, uh, Joshua, get up. Come on, tell your neighbor, it's time to get up. God said, get up, Joshua. He was there probably saying, oh, woe me. How am I going to handle this? this many people? Now Moses is gone. What am I going to do now? Uh, sometimes uh, Moses had to have like 70 elders helping him with, uh, with all the problems of those people. What am I going to do? I don't have Moses anymore. And God says, Joshua, you are the man. Get up. This is your moment, Joshua. This is your moment. This is your moment to lead your people to cross to the other side. To cross into the promised land. Fifth, we need to understand this. That is very difficult to face the challenge of change. So let me spell it out for you. If you're going to cross to the other side, to the promised land, that implies change. There are a bunch of things that are going to change in your life. They're going to be for good, but you're going to have to make some adjustments. God is saying to you, move. Get up. Move and cross this Jordan because it's going to be good for you. But there are going to be some changes. The status quo, the, the, the place where you are right now, your comfort zone is going to be gone. It's time to cross over. There's change is coming. The people of God at that time were known. Known as the people that walk around in circles. Do you know people like that? Year after year, I declare, I declare, I establish this time is going to happen. This is, my breakthrough is coming right now. You know people like that? If you're here today, snap out of it. Do something about it. Do something about it. God wants the best for you. Just follow what he's telling you. One note before we go onto, into the sixth point. I have a bunch of points over there. Listen, listen, listen. In the promised land, there are giants. They didn't fight a lot when they were in the wilderness. Couple of, couple of fights. But as soon as they hit the promised land, baby, it was fight. Wars. Fight. Conquerors conquer. You are more than conquerors, so get ready to conquer. If you go into the promised land, you're going to be able to, you're going to have to conquer. You're going to have to fight. There are going to be some wars you're going to have to fight. Each one of us have been there. But we need to get used to it. As we go into the next level, we're going to have to fight. God never told, God told the people, listen, the battle is mine. Yeah, yeah, wait a second. Don't get too excited. Wait a second. The battle is mine. But he always sent them to fight. Wait a second, Lord. Is the battle yours or mine? Somebody listening with the spiritual? In the spiritual? The battle is mine. Now go out and fight. No, you're going to have to fight. It doesn't matter. God is going to help you. God is going to give you favor. God is going to send his angels to surround you. But you're going to have to fight. This one, you're going to have to fight. There's no way to go around this one. You're going to have to fight. If you want to conquer what is yours, what belongs to you, you're going to have to do some fighting. And we have a promised land to conquer. And we have things to conquer that we cannot even comprehend. What God has for us is so good. See, I'm, 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 I'm at the end, not at the end of my life, but I'm, I'm old. My wife said that I brag too much about being old. What can I say? Perhaps it's true. 
What was I, what was I saying? <laughs> God is so good. No, what I was going to say is, we're going to have to conquer. We're going to have to fight. We're going to have to slay some giants. It's okay. We're going to have to do that. But listen to me. If you haven't conquered the wilderness, the wilderness, and this is something that Pastor touched, at some point that Pastor touched in the first service. If you haven't conquered your wilderness, don't go out and fight the giants. You know what the wilderness represents? Disobedience to God. If you're living in sin, living in sin, not sinning, everybody sins. I sin every day. Uh, not every day, but <laughs> hey, come on. You have a thought that you're not supposed to have. You say a word that you're not supposed to. Somebody cut you off on the Route 95 and you say something nice with a you wave at them. You know? Come on. Some people do that. I don't, but you do. I see that you do. <laughs> But if we're living in sin, if we're practicing, you know, practicing, practicing. A doctor practices medicine. A carpenter practices carpentry. So if you practice, meaning every day you go out and you do over and over and over the same thing. It's not an accident. It's not something that the devil fool you into that. You're already programmed to do that very thing every day. Don't try to go out and conquer giants. You're going to be defeated. You need to be able to conquer your own wilderness before you go and conquer the giants. I'm speaking to some of you here, some of you there, right now in Jesus' name. Ma'am, sir, you need to conquer that. That computer needs to go in the living room. Or maybe perhaps you need to smash it. Cost me like $3,000, Pastor. Who cares? Jesus said it's better to take off your arm and your eye. And being thrown in the hell with, the, with all of that together. You know, throw away the computer, whatever you need to do. Get into the promised land to conquer, to slay the giants, to conquer the land. Just be, be Joshua, before they went out, they said, sanctify yourself. And God is going to give you the victory. Amen? All right. Um, okay, with all of that in mind, let us understand a couple of principles. And I'm closing. My first closing. Number one, to conquer our promised land, we must assume a conqueror's attitude. Us guys, you know, when we go to fight, we, we show some muscles. It's time for Christians to show some muscle, spiritual muscles. I pass, I don't know, because the devil is too smart to, for me. Snap out of it. Devil is under your feet. S step on him. Step on him. Step on him. He is defeated. Verse 6 and 7. He said, be strong of the same. Joshua 1. Be strong and of good courage. For to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fa fathers to give them. So, basically, the first thing we need to understand is that we need to have an attitude of conqueror. He says, be strong and of good courage. When, it, when a fighter goes in the, in the ring and he knows he's, he's in good conditions, he goes with, with an attitude of conquering. So we need to do that. Conquers, conquer. Not with our own strength. Because the Bible said that God is our refuge and strength a very present help in time of trouble. And he says that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Oh, here is an area where we need extra, extra courage. Verse 7, he says, only be strong and very courageous. First he says, to conquer, he says, be courageous. But now he says, be strong and very courageous. Verse 7, look at that for yourself. Don't believe my words. Believe the word of God. That you may observe to do. To do. 
It doesn't say to read that you may observe to do according to the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper. So that is linked to my prosperity. That scripture is linked to me prospering as I conquer this land called life. Whatever it is, my promised land. God says, if I am very courageous, we need extra courage to be able to observe what the word of God says. This is the word of God. The latest word from God is already here. I went to this country. I don't, I'm not going to name the country. And I was giving a crusade there. And when I, I finished preaching, a lot of people came to the altar. Holy Spirit moved in a beautiful way. And then this lady that was one of the leaders in that church called me aside and said, Pastor, give me a word from the Lord. And I said, I just did. I just did. Were you paying attention? Were you taking notes? We need to be, have extra courage to observe what the word of God says. Okay? So, another thing that I want to tell you. Conquerors are strong and courageous. Also, conquerors have no fear. They don't dismay. Verse 9 said, I, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. If God is for us. Who can be against us? Sir, George, God is for you, my brother. My brother, God is for you. So who can, who can think about it. Who can be against you? If God is for me, who can be against me? If God is for you, who can be against you? That is a conqueror's attitude that we, we need to have. God is on my side. God is not on the side of the enemy. God is on my side. And we need to act victorious in Jesus' name because we're going to conquer this land. He said, do not be afraid. Be of good courage. We need to see ourselves as God sees us. Remember, who was this guy? Um, Gideon. Gideon was somewhere hiding from the enemy that took upon the land. And God, the angel of the Lord came, and came to him and said, you mighty man of valor. And he said, who are you talking Is this me? I'm so afraid that I'm hiding here. I don't even want to come out of this. And you're calling me mighty man of valor? That's the way we need to see ourselves. God sees you the way you should be, not the way you feel. You are more than conqueror. So get ready to conquer. Tell your neighbor, get ready to conquer. So to conquer the promised land, another point is, we must prepare to conquer what God has promised us. There is a time of preparation. Some of you that are in the school, in the university, you're preparing. Don't get discouraged. Oh, it's too hard. These subjects are too, so strong. Keep on keeping on. You know what you're doing right now? You're planting the seed. The harvest is coming. The harvest is coming. But keep on planting that seed because the, har the blessing is coming. Don't be discouraged. Some of us. In the time of preparation, we need to work. 
si Job. Am I saying that word correctly? Work. I learned one thing in this uh, beautiful nation. We came over like 40 something, 40, 30 something years ago. You work a lot here. Where I come from, Cuba, we spend a lot of time in like, you know, we work too, but uh, we take a space to relax and, and, and dance and all that. But, but, but see, that's why this society is more productive, you know, because you work. We work. I became more a part of this society. So I, I learned long ago that every day I must go out and get something. I must go out and work for something. Every, and every week I must have a paycheck. I, I must have something. If I want to have a future, I must have something. If I want to buy a house, I need to start saving money at some point. There's a time of preparation for this war. So we can conquer Verse 11, it says, pass through the camp and command the people saying, prepare provisions for yourselves. Basic, bring food to the other side because you're going you're gonna to have to eat. Prepare provisions for yourselves. For within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which God, your God is giving you to possess. Remember. Remember, in verse 13, he said, remember the word which Moses, the servant of God, commanded you, saying, the Lord is your God is giving you the rest and is giving you this land. Forget not all his benefits, says David. In Psalm 103, he says, forget not all his benefits. God is a good God. If he did it in the past, he's going to do it again in your life. But you must be ready to conquer. Now, the last thing that you need to understand is that we, to conquer the promised land, we must walk by faith. We must walk by faith. When they crossed the river, the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. As soon as the priest touched the water, the waters opened and they crossed into the promised land. So you need to be ready to walk. There was a time when Moses was crossing another, another, another uh, sea, another water, the, the Red Sea. And he was... They've been running away from Pharaoh. Pharaoh was chasing them. And there was the Red Sea. And in the back of them, there was Pharaoh and his army. And Moses, uh, God said to, um, forgive me, said, God, uh, God said to Moses, move ahead. So why are you crying to me? Moses, why are you crying to me? Tell my people to go. So Moses, at that moment when he was between the Pharaoh's army and the Red Sea, Moses started to preach. Moses said, now God is going to take you here. He's going to do this for you, for you and for that. But then God, God said, Moses, please stop talking. It's time to move on. There is a time to confess. What I'm saying, there is a time to confess, church. There is a time to declare. There is a time to quote the, the word of God. There is a time to do whatever you want to do in this, in this realm of the spirit. But there is a moment where you need to march. There is a moment when you actually need to cross into the promised land. And you need to conquer it. There is the moment. And I seize that moment for today. I see that moment for today. Get ready to conquer. Get ready to conquer. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Arise. Get ready to go where the Lord is taking you. Church, as you conquer, don't follow anything else. Follow Christ. He's going to take you places you won't believe. He's going to take you to areas you won't believe. He's going to give you victories that you don't deserve. But take it anyway because God is a good God. God is a good God. Do not follow personalities. Do not follow yourself. Do not follow your friends. 
Just follow God. He is taking you to a better place. I have a word from God for you today. As you're getting ready to the, conquer this promised land. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan. You and all these people to the land which I am giving to them. The children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will trend upon. I have given to you as I said to Moses. God has given you already that land. Whatever it is, God has given you that ministry. God has given you that blessing. God has given you that career. God has given you all of that. Just get ready to walk. Whatever you step upon is yours and belongs to you. Please stand to your feet and give some glory to God. We must have an attitude of conquerors. We need to prepare ourselves to conquer. We need to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. And actually conquer the land. Are you ready to conquer? See God is in the equation. God is not outside of what you have in your mind. The, the, the vision he placed in your heart. Doesn't belong to you. But it belongs to God himself. God has placed that in your heart. God planted that seed in your heart. It's not yours. It belongs to him. So he will make it prosper. Sir, ma'am, he will make that prosper. I declare that to you today. But one thing. It's time to leave the wilderness behind. How many of you would say, Pastor, I've been a little bit in the wilderness. Let me see your hands. I, I need to get out of the wilderness. Yeah, many. I want you to make your way here to the altar right now. Come on. Come on. Walk to the altar. Let, allow the Holy Spirit to do something in your life. God knows the battles you're fighting. It's not a secret to anyone. God knows the battles you're fighting and he's going to give you the victory. All of this is impossible. Listen, all of this is impossible to do it. On your own. You don't have the strength. I don't have the strength. But God. Oh the Holy Spirit has the strength. He's going to make it happen. He's going to make it happen in Jesus name. In Jesus name. I would like some pastors to help me here. To minister in the altar. Hallelujah. Some of the pastors if they start laying hands here. Hallelujah. I have one, I have one here. Some of the ministers. Start agreeing. We're going to agree with you in Jesus' name. We're going to agree with you. It doesn't matter how difficult it seems to you. God is going to do it. Father, in Jesus' name, allow your Holy Spirit to move in this place. Come on, raise your hands right there. Allow the Holy Spirit to move in this place right now. Start touching your people. Start touching your people in Jesus' name. Start touching your people in Jesus' name.